<laughs> Are you ready for the show? I'm okay. Where's your violin? Honestly. Well, welcome. Thank you all so much uh, for showing up. Thank you for gathering in the darkest corner of the store um, to come see Fawn. And thank you, Fawn, for coming by to visit us. You know, we've fielded many, many questions uh, on the medicinal benefits of honey and royal jelly and bee pollen over the past couple years. And we finally have a more credible mouth than mine and Michelle's and everybody else's here. Um, as you see in the email, Fawn has been one of our sort of earliest champions of uh, oriental medicine here in Savannah. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to her to start the learning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, since I'm a practitioner of Chinese medicine, I'm going to start with where I um, meet, the, meet the hive in daily practice. So in my practice and in oriental medicine, one of the main things when we want someone to heal from something is we typically take out everything sweet from their diet. Right? We take out sugars, alcohol, oftentimes starchy, starchy um, vegetables. We take out fake sweeteners. In, in most chronic illnesses, you don't really want the flavor of sweet. But we don't take out honey, and we don't take out any products from the hive. Does anybody know why? Because honey is a transformational and a medicinal food. So, how many people here like honey? <laughs> how, many know, how many people know that it's been used for thousands of years as a medicine? Okay. Um, and how many people here know about oriental medicine or have ever used oriental medicine for healing? Okay. So, first I'm going to address those of you who don't know, uh, perhaps don't know about oriental medicine and just tell you a little bit about it. So, um, it's a very cool system of medicine, first of all. It, um, you might know a little bit about Western medicine, right? And so I'm gonna draw my first picture. So, um, in Western medicine often focuses when there is illness. And Chinese medicine, primarily looks at, a, at um, a body and assesses where someone is on a continuum of health. So we think of health as a continuum where illness is down here and health is here. And so when we're talking about health, we're not just talking about the physical aspects of health, we're also talking about the emotional and sort of spiritual aspects of health. And so um, on, this condition, on this continuum of health, we think sort of like if, if you are quite ill, it's kind of like a broken down car. You're probably, you're beside the road and you have four flat tires and maybe even you, you know, your gasket's blown, you may have a windshield that is busted in. So that is illness and uh, we all know what that feels like. In Chinese medicine, we, we assess where someone is on this continuum and we use all the tools in, in, our, um, in our understanding help encourage people towards health, right? And so, in Chinese medicine, what that might be, we might need to use acupuncture or herbs, but we use an awful lot of food, okay? So honey is thought of as a medicinal food. So, so tonight's lecture is about healing with honey, and it's sort of like an oriental medical perspective. Um, Let's see. You guys can stop me at any point. We're going to start with talking about two concepts. The concept of cooperation and the concept of transformation. So actually I have this first picture here, which is a, the, it's actually a painting. That's someone here that looks very lovely. And so I want you guys to think about the levels of cooperation that it takes to just produce one uh, spoonful of honey. Okay? And so we're going to do a little exercise in terms of cooperation. It's a little yogic breath. Okay. So I want everyone to take a nice deep breath in. And on the out breath, we're all going to make the same tone. And then you're going to, until your breath goes out, you're going to make the same tone. Okay? So everybody take a nice deep breath in. And make the sound.
preparation that it takes in terms of getting honey from both flowers and uh, you know, to, to get honey. So what are some of the levels of cooperation that might need to happen to get some honey? Who has to cooperate? Sun. Sunshine. What else?
depending on um, the substance of the interaction in your own constitution. Does that all make sense so far? Okay. So these two concepts of cooperation and transformation are really integral in change medicine. Um, so, um, and flowers for centuries have been used um, in, in Chinese medicine for all kinds of healing. Like, we use flowers in our medicine for anything from allergies and colds to um, healing very fundamental blocks in the body. So even an a injured heart, we can use flowers as part of medicine. I mean, we use all kinds of herbs, but flowers have this transformative quality. Um, so you might ask, why is she, I'm supposed to hear her talking about honey, why is she talking so much about flowers, right? Because flowers um, are linked to human transformation. And um, honey and hive products actually are flower medicine. And then they're not just flower medicine, but, but they're infused through this process of the cooperation in the hive. So honey medicine is really beautiful medicine. So in Chinese medicine, again, we use um, flowers as these agents of change. Because we think of flowers as having like the blueprint of the reproduction of um, that plant. And so in human beings, we also have the blueprint of why we even came in. It's, it's in what we call our essence or in our gene. And so um, just like a plant or a flower holds the blueprint for its immunity, it's um, its sort of future metabolism, as well as its own reproduction. Human beings also have that um, in their sort of core level, in their gene level. And um, so, just as, a, just as an aside, but it's about Chinese medicine, there's three energetic levels in the body. There's the Wei level, or the immune level. There's the Ying level, or the nutritive level. And then there's the Yuan level, or the Jing level, or the essence level. So the cool thing about the hive is that it has the ability to address all these levels of human beings. Okay. I don't know any other food that, that can do that. Um, yes. Say those again. Yes. <laughs> say them again. <laughs> you got it. So the three energetic levels. It's just like exterior is defensive. Okay. So we've got the lay level, which is immune system. You've got the yin level, which has to do with our um, ability to uh, generate nutrients. Nourishment is yin level, okay? Even seeking love is yin, right? It's like what we need to survive. And then you've got the yuan level, which is really sort of our destiny. So like in this continuum, you often think of Chinese medicine as a preventative form of medicine, right? We're trying, like, in some ways, yes, we're, we're trying to propel people this direction, so away from illness, but really towards health, right? So you think of, of Chinese medicine as preventative. But really, what we're most interested in is people's destination, where they're going, why they even came into this life, like what their whole essence is about to manifest we think of it called like manifesting destiny, right? So prevention is like this is the destiny level. This is our nutritive level. So it's sort of like you have to defend your um, life and you have to create life in order to carry out your destiny. Well, I'll get back to that.